This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not dispense medical advice. Always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health providers if you have any questions regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking such advice because of something you have heard on this podcast. Welcome to a show that we like to call Prostate Cancer Real Talk. Did you know that in the U.S., one out of every eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during his lifetime? One out of eight. And black men are 50% more likely to develop prostate cancer in their lifetime and twice as likely to die from the disease. But hey, we're not here to quote statistics and tell you how tough prostate cancer can be. Rather, we are here to create a supportive community of survivors a place where we can discuss the real-life coping methods from the perspective of a married couple who are living through it day by day. Our hosts, L and Shay. This is Prostate Cancer Real Talk. In this episode, we welcome Jim Schrate. Jim holds a BS degree in finance from the University of Illinois and earned his JD from the Southern Illinois University School of Law. After having prostate surgery at the age of 58, Jim subsequently sunk into a state of anger and depression. He found companionship and encouragement by attending the Us Two Gildas Club Prostate Cancer Support Group in Chicago. Jim is now committed to helping men and their partners deal with the physical as well as the emotional challenges presented when they are diagnosed with prostate cancer. He is a staunch advocate serving in leadership roles with several advocacy groups and hospitals. Jim's story is a case study for defeating anger and depression by turning sorrow into a mission of helping others. Join us now as Jim shares his incredible journey of resurgence with us. Ellen Shea, take it away. Thank you very much, Dennis, and welcome to Prostate Cancer Real Talk. Hello, Shea. How are you today? I'm good, Elle. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, We're very pleased to welcome uh, Jim Strait, who is a director at the US2 Prostate uh, Cancer Support Group. So welcome, Jim. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Kind of give us an introduction about yourself and your role at US2. I think for almost all prostate cancer patients, um, it starts with their own story. And you've heard a little bit about mine already this morning. But um, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer at um, at age 58 uh, based on a rising PSA. Um, This was discovered because I was seeing a urologist for uh, kidney stones, and they did a PSA as part of their workup and that sort of thing. Um, It was mostly low-grade disease and, and a very small amount. And when I initially got the news, I said, well, okay, that's nice. I'll see you in six months or a year. And they said, not so fast. Hmm. And um, they argued that uh, because of my relatively young age and life expectancy at that point, and because of the fact that even though it was low volume, there was some evidence of intermediate risk disease that the only alternatives really for me were uh, surgery or or radiation. Um, I asked a lot of questions uh, of of my two, my urologist and ultimately my surgeon about the the side effects and consequences of of surgery and treatment. Um, I don't feel in some instances that I got accurate information from them. And I went ahead and had the surgery when I was 58. And um, I found that the consequences, particularly the uh, sexual consequences, were um, much worse than I had been led to expect. And um, this made me very angry. and, And I actually fell into a clinical depression that, um, I didn't realize what was going on because they don't typically warn you about the possibility of depression and some of the other things as a possible outcome of of treatment. And I didn't realize what was uh, going on until I became suicidal. Mm -hmm. And 
at that point, I went back to my surgeon and we arranged for a mental health referral. And um, I, I got some medication and I got some therapy and that helped me a great deal. Uh, somewhere in this process, um, I found my way to an us to support group. Uh, it's the support group that meets in Chicago at, at Gilda's Club. And uh, the people there were tremendously helpful to me in working through some of my issues. And um, I think, at least at that point, one of the really important things about that group was um, I was very angry. And when you're depressed and angry, it really is difficult for everybody who's around you. And at that point, my daughter was a senior in high school and, and my wife, you know, was also at, at home with us. And um, they just want things to get back to normal. They want things to be the way they were. And for the patient, a lot of times that's not possible. And so for me, at the outset, the support group was a place for that anger to go and, and to be expressed and, and listened to and, and really relieved to some extent. So that, that was my initial experience with, with the support group. And um, as time went on working with other guys who were going through various difficulties with, with prostate cancer treatment and effects of treatment, um, you know, I, I found that trying to help them allowed me to step outside myself a little bit and, and um, actually find healing through the process of, of helping other people. And I think it's probably at that point that um, I became a true believer in, in support groups and peer-to-peer and -peer support. What a great story. I mean, you know, you went from depression to suicidal to the chairman and board member of us too, which is the support group to help people with prostate cancer, men and uh, fam and their families. Shay, uh, what's, what's your perspective uh, from a wife's view on Jim's story and how does that sync up with what some of the experiences that we had were? So Jim, I'm wondering, do you find other men? Uh, because this is extremely interesting. I don't think we've had any other guests that potentially was suicidal. So dealing with us too, do you find that other men share the experience that you had? I, I'm finding that there's a lot more depression out there than is, uh, is ordinarily thought. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that we've done at us too since I've been on the board is, is to put some stuff on our website about uh, mental health and depression and trying to recognize symptoms, for example, of, of mental health issues and get help, you know, before, before it turns into uh, suicidal thoughts. And, mm -hmm. and that, you know, I don't think we've dealt in group with anyone who was specifically suicidal, but we've dealt a lot with mental health issues that, that manifest in, in one way or another. And, you know, anger is frequently mm -hmm. one. And, um, you know, for, for a while there at, at Gilda's, for actually quite a while, I was the angriest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after that calmed down a little bit, angry man number two came along. And I was able to sit back and say, well, well I've seen this movie. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we were able to give him some help. Just a reminder, to ensure that you stay up to date on the latest episodes from PCRT, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. I often wonder, like, you're married, and so with Elle, I just always, like, try and have the role as a supportive wife and, like, with encouragement, and he hasn't gotten to that point yet, so do you think that it's just some things that the wife, there, there's a level of... I guess I want to say, like, the, the husband being angry and upset, there's just a point where the wife trying to console the husband is it's just not going to work. And the husband will probably really, truly need therapy 
as well as medication. Because I'm, I'm always thinking, like, I can fix it. Like, you know, if Elle is upset or, you know, he's depressed. But I just always think, like, as the wife, I can fix it. Do you think it's just a point where, hey, wives, you just can't fix this? I, I think that point definitely exists. You know, I, I, you know, I enjoyed support from my wife and my family, particularly my son, who, who actually was at college at, at that point. I mean, we spent a lot of time on the phone, and I, I got a lot of support from him. I think sometimes it's harder for a wife or, or a child who's in the same household with the patient mm-hmm. because, you know, you've got your life going on. And what you really want is for things to get back to normal and get back to the way they were. And, and you want the patient to, to be healthy and cured and, and that sort of thing. And as time wears on and, and this anger continues or, or even gets worse, as it did in my case, I think the people around you, frankly, become fatigued. Mm-hmm. And, and it is difficult at that point to... To, to deal with it or to try to deal with it and help. And I think what happens in many of those cases and was true for me is, you know, you just kind of bottle it up and, and try to, you know, try to cover up the, the anger and, and the depression. And uh, I can say categorically that that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? It just, you know, it, uh, it, at the end of the day, I think, I think it makes it worse. So I, I think it's it's wonderful to have that kind of support, but I think it doesn't always work, and and I think it's very, you know, very difficult in ways you might not imagine. And so, you know, as we're discussing this point, what's what's coming to my mind is the fact that we are reaching out to the men and their families who are going through this, who just may not feel, you may not know that there are other people like them. Uh, One of the experiences that I had was as I began to talk openly about the fact that I had uh, had prostate cancer and had had surgery and whatnot, one of the most surprising things to me was the number of men who said, oh yeah, I decided to, you know, I decided to go with uh, radiation therapy or I had that, you know, process several years ago. I mean, You'd be surprised. Well, you wouldn't be surprised because you know this. But the fact of the matter is there are just so many guys that have gone through this or are going through this. And we just kind of keep it as a secret from each other. What are some of the things that we can do and say on this show to encourage guys, Jim, to just come out and seek help and just know that there are resources available to them? Because you know, guys, we have our pride and there's certain things, particularly when you start talking about sexual, the impact on your sexual health and whatnot, it really becomes a in the closet kind of discussion. So what would you say to the guys out there who are listening that, you know, may not be as open with their feelings as we are here today? Well, I, I think, first of all, it's helpful if, if you can get some of that out. It goes back to what I said about a moment ago about keeping things bottled up inside. And I think there are a huge number of men that do just that. And I think that they're, they're suffering because of that. The issues surrounding prostate cancer and its treatment are, are some of the most personal that a man can experience. I mean, nobody wants to stand up and say that I'm that guy with incontinence, I'm that guy with sexual dysfunction. I mean, it's just not something men really want to do. But the truth of the matter is, as you suggested a moment ago, there are a lot of people, a lot of men out there with those issues. And by going to a support group or joining uh, an online virtual support group, uh, you can talk with those guys, and, and you can learn about how they're coping, and you can have an outlet to express what's going on with you. And I think, you know, the, the face-to-face support groups are, are a big challenge, I think, for, for people. I mean, I think there's huge value 
the face-to-face support groups, but there are a lot of guys out there that just can't get there. And one of the things that the pandemic has taught us, the pandemic and some of the work of ANCAN, Answer Cancer Foundation, with virtual support groups is that they are a good entry point to the uh, support system because you can join a virtual group by Google. You can hide your picture. Uh, you can change your name. You, you can be completely anonymous. So you can, you can go and you can listen. And, and when you choose to and where, when you think it's going to help you, then you can talk. And, and one of the other things that you learn in that process in the support group, either, you know, either virtual or, or face-to-face, is that you, know, you may be able to come up with something to say to somebody that's going to help them. And if you can reach that point, then you're going to find healing with some of your own issues. For more information on our guest and all of our Prostate Cancer Real Talk guests, you can go to our website, prostatecancerrealtalk.com. That's prostatecancerrealtalk.com. So, Jim, um, of course, I'm always coming from the wives perspective. So with your depression, uh, when you were, you know, initially diagnosed and after your surgery, did you think that perhaps uh, or did you and your wife maybe have to go to like marital counseling? Uh, Did you notice that it was a strain on the marriage because, you know, just being upset, angry, depressed? Yeah, I think it was creating a strain, but, you know, we, we did not pursue couples counseling. Okay, because we're, we, you know, we've had a therapist on, and you just hear so many different stories uh, yeah. because, of you know, it, unfortunately it does. Uh, some people have sexual issues much longer than others, and potentially it, it causes problems in the relationship. And I just always like to say that, to me, you know, I don't know, maybe a newly married couple, you know, maybe have a more challenging time with that. But, you know, we've been married for some years. And so to me, it was more our marriage and our relationship was more about physical intimacy in terms of sex. I mean, I look at intimacy in so many different ways, but we're hearing that it's a big issue for a lot of couples. Do you hear that come up perhaps in the uh, us to support group? We do. We okay. do. And, and, you know, we, we don't hesitate to recommend couples therapy, and and you know we know of, of some people who do this and, and do a good job with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it it doesn't really work for for everybody, right? I mean, I think that you know the the primary maybe impediment is is that uh, both partners need to be willing to do it. Yes, and that isn't always the case. And you know, I I think. It is difficult to communicate, and if a couple is experiencing poor communication about matters of intimacy and that mm-hmm. sort of thing before this disease and, and before treatment, I think that, that those difficulties just expand exponentially Right after mm-hmm. treatment. I think maybe just a, a final point, for a patient and inpatient recovery, Empowerment is a very important thing, and taking charge of your own life. And advocacy is a piece of that, making a difference and working with others to make a difference to increase research funding is just such a natural fit in the healing process that, um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about, you know, the possibility that the opportunities that we're going to have to do exactly that. Just a reminder, to ensure that you stay up to date on the latest episodes from PCRT, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. You know, just because you are an excellent urologist and a world-renowned surgeon, not you personally, but, you know, just because an individual may be a world-renowned surgeon and a great urologist, it doesn't mean that they're the world's best communicator, okay? And so everybody doesn't communicate with other people the same way. And regardless of your medical expertise and whatnot, to me, there's no better person to tell you about this experience than somebody who's gone through it themselves. They can offer you perspectives, 
that necess- don't necessarily come up through your uh, conversations with your doctor. That's, again, another mission that we have here, and that is to put people in touch with real patients and people that have gone through this. Kind of recap your thoughts for today and um, today's show and any thoughts that you'd like to leave with our listeners. Well, I, I, I think a couple of things. I, I think patient or, or peer support is tremendously important for, for a number of the reasons that, Al, you've suggested. You really need to talk with someone who's been through it uh, to develop your expectations and, and that sort of thing. And then once you get through treatment, you really don't know what's going to happen. Some people have a very good outcome, uh, some less so. But there are ways of coping with that that are not in the medical books. And part of that is just having a place to go and talk about it when everyone around you is, you either can't talk to them or or they're tired of hearing it. So I would say, I, I guess, two things. Reach out to the support organizations. Learn all you can about your treatment decision. And don't be bashful about seeking support. Again, we are here as a communications community. We are here to facilitate a dialogue among people who have joined, like uh, Dave Housen told me a couple weeks ago, to join that have joined this club that nobody wants to belong to. Uh, but we are here, um, and we have great tools to help each other, this podcast being one of them. And so we just want to encourage people to know the fact that you are not alone uh, if you're facing this uh, challenge. Jim, thank you so much. It was so awesome having you. I look My forward pleasure. to do. Yeah, I look forward to more conversations and more great things with the Us Two organization. Thank you so much for being well, part of you, Prostate Amy. Cancer. Real talk. Well, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. I, I think it's uh, tremendously important, and and I, I think you you found a gap really in what's out there, and that's good. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Jim. all. Find out more information on the guests you just heard or previous guests and a list of Prostate Cancer Real Talk episodes, visit our website, prostatecancerrealtalk.com. And if you have a question, comment, or if you would like to share your story, send Ellen Shea an email, lnshay at prostatecancerrealtalk.com. That's L-E-L and Shay, S-H-A-Y, at prostatecancerrealtalk.com. Dot com.